The hit NBC series The Blacklist first aired in 2013 and caught the world by storm. The series tells the story of a new FBI profiler, Elizabeth Keene, who has her entire life uprooted when a mysterious criminal, Raymond Reddington, who eluded capture for decades, turns himself in and insists on speaking only to her. So stay tuned and don't go away because we are revealing The Blacklist behind the scenes secrets and details fans never knew about. First up, what accounts for the show's success? Let's take a look. Much of the show's success can be attributed to its star-studded cast, which includes James Spader, Megan Boone, and the late Brian Dennehy, a veteran screen actor who had decades of experience under his belt in both films and TV. But it's not only audiences who love the show, but critics as well. And frankly, it's a rarity when you have both. We've uncovered several behind-the-scenes facts and secrets about the show, and we're going to share them with you. Many of you were probably unaware that the original concept of the series was inspired by criminal-turned-informant James Whiteley Bulger, who was also brought into life by Johnny Depp in the film Black Mass. When the series was in its early development stages, showrunner and executive producer John Eisendrath did his best to find ways to create a crime show that was far outside the typical mold of the standard hero cop tracks down and busts the bad guy type show. From the beginning, Eisendrath wanted to make a show where a criminal helps bring the bad guys in. Whitey Bulger was was a Boston crime lord who served as an informant for a number of years and later became one of the FBI's most wanted criminals. Because as Bulger enjoyed the benefits and protections that came with being an FBI informant, he and his crew were running around the streets of Boston selling drugs and taking hits out on people. Next up, when was James Spader cast in the series? Let's find out. Surprisingly, James Spader wasn't cast until three days before the pilot was shot. Talk about short notice. That's almost unheard of. James Spader played Raymond Red Reddington, and he was also in Avengers The Age of Ultron, and several other films dating back to the late 1970s and early 80s. But believe it or not, before Spader signed on to play the part of Reddington, Eisendraft said he offered the role to Kiefer Sutherland, Richard Gere, Brian Cranston, and Pierce Brosnan. One of the craziest parts of the story, though, is the fact that Spader never even met the show's executive producers face-to-face -face prior to showing up on set to shoot the pilot. Executive producers had some phone calls with Spader to discuss the character and his motivations, but they didn't meet the actor until the first day of production. It's a good thing that Spader was brought on board, however, because the expertise and contributions he brought to the table have proved to be invaluable. Spader even came up with the idea of his character Red wearing his iconic fedora. For fans, Red Reddington is one of the most iconic characters on television, and much of that is due to with the character's appearance, specifically that fedora. Before Spader was cast, no one thought about Red wearing a fedora, so all of the credit for that creative choice goes to Spader. For the most part, it's writers that bring creative ingenuity to a production, but oftentimes high-caliber actors have a ton of great suggestions as well. Up next, what other contributions has Spader made to the series? You are about to find out. Red's fedora was far from Spader's only contribution. The talented actor also came up with the idea that Red should have a shaved head. During a media interview in 2000. 2013, Spader discussed the decision to have Red appear more clean-shaven and said, I'd had my hair long for, I think, the last few projects that I've done, and it just felt, it felt like the right thing for him. So I, it was an idea that I instigated, and I think it was the right choice. It seemed to fit his lifestyle, and he's someone who has to move, travel lightly and more swiftly, and it seemed eminently practical for him. Another behind-the-scenes secret that fans are likely to be unaware of is that actor Megan Boone spent a week prepping for what she felt was her best audition ever. Megan plays FBI Special Agent Elizabeth Liz Keene on The Blacklist. Prior to landing a job on the series, Megan was a struggling actor. She now claims that she gave everything she had into her audition and considers it to be the best audition of her career. In a recent interview, Megan revealed, Once I got a hold of The Blacklist and I read it, I was immediately kind of drawn to the character of Elizabeth Keene, and I worked really hard on it for about a week before I met with John I. Eisendrath and John Bokenkamp and John Carnahan, who directed it. In that meeting, I just kind of put it out all on the table. I probably gave one of the best auditions of my career because it was one of the more important ones to me. After her first audition, Megan had to go back in a few more times for further readings, which isn't that uncommon. Actually, if you're an actor, that's a positive sign. It means producers are interested in you and probably are thinking of hiring you. Stay tuned and don't go away because we're revealing more behind the scenes secrets of The Blacklist. Next up, how much did
did Netflix pay to acquire the rights to NBC's most popular crime drama? Let's find out. Less than a month before season two of The Blacklist premiered in September of 2014, Netflix paid a staggering amount of money for the streaming rights to NBC so they could stream The Blacklist on Netflix. So how much cash did Netflix have to fork over to acquire the rights to stream The Blacklist? A whopping $2 million per episode. In the days before Netflix was the world's largest leading juggernaut of streaming content, it struggled to find ways to keep its customers happy and satisfied. And for Netflix, customer satisfaction came at a steep price. But whatever the cost, Netflix was willing to pay it, even if it meant paying $44 million per season for the blacklist. Back in 2014, the $2 million per episode price tag was the largest fee Netflix had ever paid for streaming rights. But it turned out to be a prudent investment for Netflix, whose popularity has soared ever since. Recently, though, the coronavirus pandemic has wreaked havoc around the world, and for television and film productions in particular. Producers of The Blacklist, however, came up with a solution to the problem. They announced that the season 7 finale would come out a few weeks early and that it would be animated. They also chose to combine previously shot live-action footage with a type of animation that looks similar to a graphic novel or video game. The season came to a close and fans were satisfied. Up next, how did the use of animation help producers with the show's action sequences? You're about to find out. Series producers were able to pull off a death-defying stunt that wouldn't have been possible were it not for the use of animation. The jump to animation enabled producers to conclude season 7 with a bang because the technology gave John Bokenkamp and John Eisendrath the ability to pull off one of the largest action sequences that would have been impossible to shoot in live action. Eisendrath said, We had a big helicopter sequence that we could never have done. Someone was supposed to open up a suitcase filled with paper and it was supposed to fly through the rotors of the helicopter, but there were a million legitimate safety rules, which in the real world, would have prevented that from happening. Well, there are no rules in animation, so that briefcase opens and everything goes up in a way that it never otherwise would have. Another amazing thing about The Blacklist's leap to animation is the fact that it allowed for the return of the late Brian Dennehy's character, Dom. When the tragic news broke out that Brian Dennehy passed away at the age of 81 in April 2020, fans of the series were saddened, but also worried that they wouldn't see a conclusion to Dennehy's character, Dominic Dom Rostova's storyline. As season 7 drew to a close earlier than expected, producers promised fans that they hadn't seen the last of Dom, and in the final moments of season 7, it was clear that producers had kept their promise to fans as the character Liz speaks to her grandfather. Finally, what's next for The Blacklist? After the death of Liz, season 9 shoots forward two years into the future and catches up on the lives of the FBI task force. At the start of the season, you'll see the team disbanded, and Red disappears following Liz's death. But but it won't take long for him to get back into the mix as a new task force will get to work to track him down. It'll also become clear to viewers that Liz's death has taken a toll on everyone in the show. There's also the real issue of Red's health, which has led to fan speculation that he might be getting killed off. If season 9 is the end of this series, which many fans believe is a possibility, it could be the perfect way to conclude one of the most memorable series in TV history. That's a wrap for today's video. Thanks for watching.